I recently mentioned I'd like to take a bit of a break from reviewing cameras all the time. I need a bit of a breather, so I'm going to be looking at a kitchen appliance today. It's the Hamilton Beach Breakfast Sandwich Maker. Now, in my opinion, the best thing that McDonald's make are their breakfasts. It's about the only thing I eat at McDonald's. I like the sausage and egg McMuffin, and I'll show you what one of those is in case you're unfamiliar with it, which I think is pretty unlikely, but here we go anyway. Here's what it's made up of. You've got an English muffin on the top that's toasted, a square of cheese, a sausage patty, a fried egg, and then on the bottom you've got another English muffin. Pretty simple, really. Now, this is a pretty rare sight in my house because all the McDonald's are quite a distance away, so I never tend to buy one of these and bring it home. I'll get a couple a year when I'm out and about, but wouldn't it be nice if I could make them in my own home using this Hamilton Beach Breakfast Sandwich Maker? Looking at the instructions, you can see there's five easy steps, and apparently you're supposed to be able to do it in five minutes. Now, of course, you can always make one of these with a frying pan and a toaster. There's nothing stopping you. It's just I like reviewing gadgets, so I've gone and got this gadget just so I can have a look at it, review it for you, and see if it's any good. By the way, at the bottom here, it says meat must be pre-cooked. This doesn't cook the meat. It just pretty much heats things. Now let's just have a look around it. You can see here that it's all made out of metal. I don't know if this is cast iron or what, I'm no kind of metallurgist, but I can tell you it's pretty solid, heavy thing. Seems well made, everything's non-stick. You've got a ring there, you've got another ring there, but that one is a little bit different because it's got a slide out section in it there all become apparent later on and then of course you've got another hot plate on the top you can lift that middle bit out like that for cleaning purposes then you've just got those two hot plates to wipe down and it goes back in like that into the hinge on the front of the sandwich maker at the bottom there's two lights for the power and ready on the bottom of it there's two rubber feet at the front there that stop it moving around too much on the counter and then at the back that's where the power lead comes out it's rather short that and of course it is a us plug yes i did import this from america now i'm not going to be able to just plug that into those plug sockets there with an adapter because this is a 120 volt device that you just pop and blow a fuse it also requires 600 watts now 600 watts is quite a lot so you can't just use a cheap voltage converter step up step down thing you need something like this this industrial type unit now if you're using 600 watts you'll need something that maybe can cope with perhaps eight nine hundred or a thousand watts this is a 1500 watt device but i can use it for other things in the future cost about a hundred pounds by the way Anyway, let's see if it works. We've got it all plugged in. Let's uh, hope we don't get the magic blue smoke coming out of one of these things when we switch it on. Let's uh, just flip that switch and see what happens. Great, the red light comes on. That means it's ready to go. So let's switch it off and have a look at those instructions. Okay, the first thing we have to do is wipe it down to clean it in case anything got on it in transit. Now notice this part here mentions hot surface. That means when it's cooking, I won't be able to lift that with my fingers. I've got to be careful of getting any more burns after getting that big scar on my hand the other week. Right, now here's the instructions, and let's follow these step by step. The first thing that we need is our ingredients. So we need an egg, a square of cheese, a pre-cooked sausage patty, and then an English muffin, or as we call them in England, a muffin, sliced as well. Right, so let's put it all together. First thing is we switch it on and then we'll wait for that ready light to come on to show that it's up to power. It's got enough heat, you know, it's like heated all the plates and things. Right, we are ready to go now. So here we go. Let's try making a breakfast muffin. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to lift it up with a bit of a tea towel here because it says it's hot. I don't want to find out if it is or not. We'll just believe it. Let's put the English muffin in the bottom there facing upwards and then uh, the square of cheese has to go in on top of that next. Well, at least it does in my recipe. You can sort of flip these things around a little bit if you want. I need to break the edges off that. It's a little bit too big. We'll just shove it down in there. Don't want it all dripping over the edge. Right, now we'll put the sausage patty in. And then close that first section there. And now we're going to break an egg into that next section there. The bit with the slide out plate and... Uh, Amazingly, I've managed to do it without breaking the yolk, which is rather unusual for me. Now, the next bit is a bit weird. Putting a piece of bread on top of a raw egg. 
That makes me feel a little bit nauseous. I kind of feel like I'm going to get salmonella or something. But they must know what they're doing, so follow the instructions. Five minutes later, this is what you have to do. Slide that thing around the edge there. That lets the egg supposedly drop onto the next section. Now I'm supposed to lift the bottom up and it's all supposed to just pop out of the bottom. It's not doing, I'm just getting half of it there. The egg is stuck in the middle. So what I'm going to have to do is sort of poke it through, I think, by lifting the top up and sort of banging down on the bit of English muffin here to sort of knock it through. I think it's just got stuck to the edges there with that egg, as you can see. But once I've got it through there, it actually doesn't look too bad. Let's take it off with this wooden spatula. It says don't use any metal tools on this. You don't want to scratch that non-stick coating. But let's just have a look what we've managed to create here. Lifting the top off, you can see that the egg is cooked, but it's also somehow fused with that English muffin. So it's kind of like an eggy muffin all in one thing, but it is cooked. The bottom half, again, the cheese is melted and there's a lot of steam coming off there to show you how hot everything is. Now I'll just take a bite of it but unfortunately I can't tell you what it tastes like because I don't have a sense of taste. I haven't for a couple of years now. But looking at it, it looks pretty good. I mean it's a bit diagonal but you kind of get the idea that it's actually done a pretty decent job, surprisingly so. Now to clean it up, it's not too big a deal. That bit just lifts out and you can wash it in the sink or stick it in a dishwasher. Now, I can't really recommend people in the UK getting one of these just to make that. It's not worth the hassle. Not because it's difficult to use, but because of the voltage issues. Converting 120 volts 600 watts to UK power supply needs a ridiculously large step-up, step-down transformer, which most people won't have. Also, there's another issue. In the UK, it's impossible to get hold of pre-cooked sausage patties. To Americans, that will sound ridiculous, but believe it or not, nobody over here sells those. So I'm left with options like using ham and things instead, which isn't really what I wanted. I wanted to make a sausage and egg McMuffin. And this device does actually make a pretty decent one, but unfortunately it's not really convenient to use in the UK. Anyway, for the moment, thanks for watching.